All right, so welcome. I'm really excited to be here with Whitney Webb today. And um, I feel like the plant-based vegan craze, however you wanna call it, I know I use air quotes, um, is really big. And Whitney has changed her lifestyle to more of a plant-based lifestyle. She's gonna actually talk about kind of the differences between plant-based and vegan and why she made that change. So Whitney, if you can just introduce yourself, we'll start there and tell us a little bit about yourself and then we can move into your lifestyle change. Um, um, I'm excited to be here. So I have been eating probably about 90-ish percent plant-based for the last, oh my gosh, it's probably almost four years now. Um, and my choice was because I just knew it was better for my health, my digestive system, um, just overall health. I felt better with less animal products. So I've just kind of learned how to incorporate that more. Um, I'm a big foodie. I love, I want things to taste good um, and be pretty. And so I have learned kind of how to incorporate that, um, and just help people incorporate it all together instead of just having to eat like a bunch of salads, just how to incorporate vegetables into the fun food you already love and eat. So that's awesome. And like, I know that there's a lot of people that say like, it's all or nothing. You're fully vegan or you can't call yourself even plant-based. Like, how do you, how do you sort of deal with that? And like the differences between being plant-based, which is really what you are and someone who's like a very strict vegan. Um, so the difference between, in my opinion, I'm sure there's other opinions out there, but the difference between kind of eating more or, you know, leaning towards at least over 50% plant-based um, and veganism is veganism is very strict where there is absolutely no interaction with any animal product. So um, they would never use honey because bees make honey. Like I don't, if I go out to eat, I usually don't ask if something is completely vegan um, because I do do mine for health reasons. Not that I don't love animals, um, but I, but I do do mine um, solely for health reasons. So I do not have to worry if maybe it's been cooked on the same griddle as let's say eggs or something like that. Um, I do notice now that my body's really is sensitive to meat. So if I, if it has come in contact with meat, I will be able to tell. I won't get super sick um, unless it actually has meat in it. But I, if it's been on the same grill, I can notice, but it's not any issue. Um, and I do eat honey. I get a lot of questions about that. Um, it, in my opinion and what I've done, the research I've done, it does not affect bees. They're fine. Um, so <laughs> I, um, but I do eat some seafood. I can't do, I like, I, because of my activity level, I do need a good amount of protein in my system on a daily basis. And it's hard to get and be a complete vegan and get enough protein. That can be an argument because it depends on what you eat. Um, I try not to eat a ton of soy, but I do eat soy. So I do get plant proteins that way as well. Um, and vegetables actually have quite a bit of protein more than a lot of people are think. Um, but I do eat seafood probably once every other week. Um, sometimes a little more, sometimes less. I love it. So, um, yeah, that's kind of the difference between, and a strict vegan will definitely like, they stay away from gelatin. They stay away from, you know, they definitely ask and check every label. Um, I just don't choose to do that because I am hungry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a lot about, like we talk about just in nutrition in general and 80, 20 lifestyle, and you were sort of living that 80, 20 lifestyle with a plant-based nutrition. I hate, I, I know that the word is diet, but I hate using the word diet. Yeah. So I'll just say plant-based mm -hmm. nutrition. And that's awesome. Like, instead of like having to bucket yourself into being solely plant-based or solely vegan, you live a plant-based lifestyle. Right. And that's, that's awesome. And what would you say to someone that wants to start incorporating more plant-based foods into their nutrition plan, but you know, kind of like what you did where you didn't go from zero to a hundred, right? Like you, you ramped up and now you're at a level that's comfortable, which still isn't a hundred percent. And that's perfect for your lifestyle. So what would you say to someone that wants to kind of, for health reasons, incorporate more plant-based meals? Um, I think the biggest thing is don't change what you're doing. You can just sub things in, um, and sub me out. So 
if you're used to having like pasta at night, instead of using your, um, you know, ground turkey or your ground beef, maybe add some lentils or just add more um, hearty vegetables. Beets are really great in a pasta sauce. Um, things like zucchini, squash is amazing. Um, and you can blend it in. Like if you're a little bit pickier, I love vegetables in all forms. So I haven't had that problem personally, but like, as far as my husband or son go, a lot of times I kind of have to hide it in there. And I try to pick vegetables that have a little less of an intense flavor. Um, and you can also do like, I've done lentil pasta. It's delicious. Um, if you do want to get more protein in your sauce. So things like that, if you're making that, or if you're making a chili, it's super easy to get a great amount of um, beans in a chili and you won't even miss the meat. That has been a really big one for my family. Um, it's, you're pretty able to incorporate it in things. Pizzas, you can, I mean, you can sandwiches, just add more vegetables to your sandwich, or instead of doing a side of fries, do a side of turnip fries or squash fries, or even sweet potato fries, they're just going to have more nutrients and they're going to keep you fuller longer too. Um, and then I'm a volume eater. So I really like stuff like that because I can have way more of that and feel really good instead of trying to eat a ton of pasta or a ton of French fries. Um, chickpea pasta is extremely protein rich and is delicious. Um, I mean, some of those pastas are not tasty. So I, <laughs> I, it real. Like, but they're not going to be your substitute and you're going to end up going back. So finding things that you really like will keep you consistent too, in being able to continue to add more. And as you go more, you'll, your taste buds will change too. So I have a really hard time eating things now that aren't, um, more vegetable wise. And I love beans and like, I've learned how to use beans in a lot of things. Um, Cause they're a great source and a great natural source of protein as well. So I love beans too. Um, you talked a little bit about like some substitutes you can use, obviously like regular pasta is vegan, but to your plant-based, but to your point, um, if you use like a more protein rich pasta, it will help keep you fuller longer and obviously help with your protein intake, um, and probably have more nutrients in it. Do you have some favorite products that you like that are good subs and some that you're like, <laughs> don't bother, <laughs> like you brought up? Um, I have tried really hard to get into edamame um, pastas mm -hmm. and things. I love edamame by itself, like in full edamame form. But if you try to make it into a rice or a pasta, I have noticed that it tastes like hay. Um, and I think that's a pretty bad connotation too, because a lot <laughs> be like people think vegans or plant-based lifestyles taste like hay or like dirt. And they're like, I don't want to eat that. So, um, yeah, they're not good. I have literally tried every brand out there. There's, um, several and I'm like, they can't make it taste good. Um, and then as far as rice pastas, I am not a huge fan. I don't think it gets the right consistency. The sauce won't stick to it. Um, it can, get either too mushy. I've never just been personally been able to get it to a good consistency. And if I want something that's pasta like, I want it to have that texture and that's mm. somewhat of that. Um, I probably, uh, for chickpea pastas, my favorite brand is Bonza. They do a really nice job and they have several different varieties. So if you're like following a recipe to a tea and you have to have, you know, you're making a plant-based macaroni and cheese, or even if you're want to do vegetarian, um, and you want to use regular cheese, the noodles hold up like that they have, and they have elbow macaroni and they have the rotini and they have penne and they have all the things. Um, and that's a big deal too. If you have kids, my child, maybe he's just, um, set in his ways, but if he has spaghetti, it has to be a spaghetti noodle. So it's, they make a great spaghetti noodle. Like I love that brand. They um, have other things too, besides just pasta and I, everything tastes delicious and it doesn't taste to me. It doesn't taste like you're eating chickpeas because that can sound weird. Um, cause chickpeas have a distinct flavor and texture, but it tastes like pasta in my opinion. That's awesome. Yeah. I, um, do you ever use the shirataki noodles? Yes. I have just started using those. I bought those from thrive market. They actually make their own brick through their own brand. Okay. And um, they're pretty good and they're, they're extremely, um, low calorie, low carb, and they do have a good amount of protein. So I've been, impressed yeah, with them. I've been using the miracle noodle. I don't know about the ones from thrive, but yeah. I've been using them a while. 
Um, and I really like them as well. I'm also a volume eater, so you can eat like a That's ton. Great. And they, I think they have like 10 calories or something, a serving, it's something crazy. Um, I haven't tried the Bonza though, so I'll definitely yeah. try that. And I don't like beets, so I'm curious about this beet in pasta sauce thing. Maybe I'll have to. Um, it makes it a little richer, like especially okay. if you're making it in with tomatoes. So it's, I, I love the flavor it gives. Um, it's also pretty. So um, that's funny. I love beets, but they have to be done a certain way. Um, and I don't like to cut and peel them because they dye everything purple. Yes, yes, they do. Um, but I, another really good way to get more plant-based protein in is seeds. Um, specifically pepitas or pumpkin seeds. Mm. You can buy raw ones and toast them. Um, if you buy a toasted one, they're usually pretty salty. So I just buy them raw and um, throw them on a cookie sheet and toast them for five to 10 minutes. Just be careful because they can burn really quick. Um, and there's a great amount of protein in them and they're very filling. So you can add those into literally anything. Soups, salads. Um, I put them on sandwiches. Like you can do a lot with seeds. Um, and they're yummy. So I do a butternut squash soup that is vegan, not, it just happens to be vegan. And I toast pepita seeds and put them on top. Trader Joe's has a great, like untoasted one that you can, I do mine in a pan. Cause I always burn them I put them in the oven, but I didn't know they had good protein. So that's awesome. Yeah. And, uh, I want to say a fourth cup has, um, like 10 grams of protein, which is awesome. Um, and if you're gonna sub, like you do need to make sure you're eating enough, um, because plant-based is going to be, um, there's less caloric, um, intake than a meat lifestyle. So you want to be really care animal products in general. And so you want to be really careful and make sure you're eating enough because that can cause, you know, then you're hungry and you don't want to be hungry. And then you're like, this isn't fun because I'm just eating vegetables. I'm starving. Um, so pumpkin seeds are really like pumpkin seeds, be uh, beans. I like, I tend to go towards those things because they are more filling. Mm -hmm. Um, plus they'll have a good amount of protein, but they'll keep you fuller longer. Um, if you're just eating salads and you cut out, because you actually don't need a ton of protein. Um, not to contradict myself. I do. I need to, know, I know how much I need, um, during the day, but I have a ballpark. I'm not super specific. Um, but I, if you're just cut out meat and you just eat strictly like carbs, fruits, vegetables, you are going to get really hungry. Okay. Um, so it's a good, it's nice to just find a balance, but it's really keep it simple don't overthink it and then just move on. Like if you're hungry later, just grab something that's going to be a little more rich. Um, having a really good based superfood shake or protein shake. Um, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of protein in those and that's a nice way and an easy way to get, um, a good amount, especially that's if you awesome. use it as a meal. Or yeah. Yeah, for sure. You can, sneak in some veggies in that too. You were talking about sneaking in veggies earlier. You can like blend up cauliflower on those. You can't even taste Absolutely. it and it just kind of makes them richer. Yeah. Shakeology is awesome for that. So that's, that's, that's great. That's really, really smart. Um, and I know that you're like a little, uh, not little, but you're a, you're a ninja when it comes to plant-based recipes. So can you tell us a little bit about your cookbook, um, and sort of what's in there and how people can grab one? Um, I'm so excited for my cookbook. So uh, all those recipes are ones that have tested on other people, meaning people that do not mainly eat um, plant-based, might not enjoy vegetables as much. My kid eats all of them and he's 12 and he has approved every single recipe, which is a big deal um, because he is definitely a meat eater and so is my husband. So these work on them. Um, one of my favorite recipes in the book is, um, I do have my vegan chili in there, which is delicious, but I think my very favorite one is my sweet potato nachos. Um, they are delicious. They are made with a, um, cashew queso that I have the recipe for that in the cookbook as well. And I use it all the time on a lot of things, um, or it's just really good by itself too. So, um, that is probably one of my favorites. Another one of my favorites is my chickpea cookie dough. 
Um, it literally tastes like chocolate chip cookie dough. You can, you can bake with it too. Um, but I have it in there just as the dough because it's, it's delicious. Um, and you can freeze it and kind of pretend it's ice cream as well. So, um, it's, that's a popular one that I use a lot. Um, it can be really, you can make it really pretty and fun and add sprinkles and all the things. So, um, sprinkles are important. So <laughs> that's a good one. I mean, there's so many fun things in there. I'm so excited. Um, I have a really great, uh, chili garlic tofu recipe that, um, is awesome over zoodles or could be over chippy pasta, or you can use it in like a rice bowl. Um, it's pretty versatile and it, the sauce is unreal. It's so yummy. Um, Oh my gosh, there's so much spaghetti squash recipes, like a Mexican spaghetti spaghetti squash bowl and lots of smoothie bowls too, because I do love a good Shakeology smoothie bowl. Mm, yeah, those are those, especially on a hot day. That's awesome. Do you have a favorite, just a personal question, do you have a favorite cheese substitute? Because I don't do well with cheese digestive wise in general and cheese is hard to sub in. You talked about cashew queso, so that kind of made me think of it. Yeah. Um, I personally try to stay away from a lot of processed vegan foods. There are several out there. I get a lot of questions about the burgers. Um, I do eat on occasion a Beyond Burger. It is less processed than impossible. Um, right. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty dang sure from what I've seen and researched and just looking at the labels. Um, and I feel different when I eat a Beyond Burger versus an Impossible Burger. Um, and I'll do that every now and then. Cause every now and then I crave a burger. Um, so, but I do know a beef burger would hurt me. Um, so I, what was your question? Sorry, Jillian. She, subs, <laughs> like, she oh. substitutes. Oh, okay. Uh, personally, they're really hard to find. And that's another, that's why I got on that process topic is they're very processed. So you do want to be careful with your ingredients, like check the labels, just like you would any other food. Um, but I really like chow. It's C H A O. They make a great cheese and it's actually easier to find. Um, it's in most markets. Now I've seen it. Um, it's in my opinion, it tastes really good and it melts. So if you want to melt a melted cheese, you can do that. Also, it's great not melted. Um, okay. And a lot of them have a really distinct, weird flavor. And they have, they're made with tapioca um, flour or tapioca in general, like Daya uses a lot of it. And so it's a sweeter cheese. And in my opinion, you don't want sweet cheese. So um, if you're like using it for something, creating it by itself, it's, yes, it's fine. Um, but chow's awesome. Okay. And the cool. whole family will eat. Whole family likes some chow. I'll have to look for it. I haven't seen it. I see the diet a lot and I haven't had great luck with it. So um cool. Good to know. It doesn't melt. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Um, so I, I just want to thank you for joining me to chat a little bit about plant-based. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'm sure they can reach out to you. Um, and thanks yeah. for sharing a little bit of your story. Yes. I'm, and we'll post and my, the link um, to the cookbook in the um, description. Yeah. Awesome. I'm excited. And yeah, any questions about that or any questions with swapping recipes or adding more um, plant-based options into your um, nutrition plan? I don't like the word diet either. Um, let me know. I'm always happy to answer any of those questions. I love to talk nutrition. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you.